Hi, my name is Dana Caves. I'm a registered dietitian and I work at Smithville Medical Center Family Health Team. I've partnered up with West Lincoln Public Library in Smithville to be able to answer questions from our community members about diet and nutrition. Today's question is about cholesterol. The question is, what are the best recommendations for reducing cholesterol? So I see a lot of this in practice. I have lots of patients with high cholesterol. And the big reason for why we're concerned about having high cholesterol is that it can clog your arteries over time. And so imagine your artery is like a pipe um, and imagine if that pipe got um, gunked up and it got a complete blockage. If that blockage happened to be in one of the arteries feeding your heart, that's a heart attack. If the blockage is one of the um, arteries feeding to your brain, that's a stroke. So we, we really do want to make sure our patient's cholesterol is um, kept low. So the best diet way to control your cholesterol, there's three things. We want to look at trans fats, saturated fats, and reducing our intakes of added sugars. So um, trans fats are uh, industry made uh, source of fats. It does occur naturally in um, our, our dairy products, but the ones that we're most concerned about are the industry made products. Um, and where they, where they're, what they are is basically um, you take any kind of oil and uh, it's modified in a way that it makes it so that that, that trans fats will uh, increase um, uh, your bad cholesterol and decrease your good cholesterol. Um, so this is the this is the type of uh, industry made fats that we really do want to cut back. So um, on our labeling system in Canada, we do have it under the nutrition facts. So if you pick up a product, um, here's an example that I've got. Um, unfortunately, um, it's not a very good example because it doesn't have any trans fats. But what you would look to see is to look at the trans fats on the package there. Um, you'd want to see it's zero. But the other thing that you want to look at is our ingredients on the package. So words that indicate that there are trans fats on the product would be if it said hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated oils of any kind or shortening. So you wanna check products for that. Big things that would have it um, would be anything that's shelf stable for a really long time. So um, things like uh, store-bought baked goods, cakes, pie crusts, um, uh, frozen prepackaged things, uh, cookies, crackers, um, oh gosh, what else? Um, anything deep, you know, deep fried uh, type things, uh, fried foods like donuts, um, yeah, things like that are the ones that you really want to be careful of. Um, so you want to check the ingredients on those. Oh, one of the big ones that I get with a lot of patients that they don't realize is our shelf stable peanut butter. So like your, your stereotypical just, you know, craft or Jif peanut butter, um, it does have hydrogenated oils in it. So alternative things that you can choose for stuff like that, pretty easy one for the peanut butter is just to choose a natural peanut butter. And you'll see under the ingredients, you won't see any words that say hydrogenated oils or partially hydrogenated oils or shortening. So it's just actually roasted peanuts that have been pureed up and packaged for you, which is a much healthier choice. Um, things when it comes to like cookies or crackers, um, crackers, I always try to seek out ones that say that they are baked, not fried. Um, and you look to see under the ingredients that it does not contain any partially hydrogenated oils, hydrogenated oils or shortening. Um, uh, when it comes to cookies, uh, you know, I, if I can't find a healthier store-bought version, then I'll try making it myself because I know that I can make a healthier version than what I would buy in the store. So the big thing with the trans fats um, and why they're so harmful for us is, again, like I mentioned, it will increase your bad cholesterol and it will decrease your good cholesterol. So the net effect that it has for our heart health is really not good as it will do very bad things for our cholesterol. So uh, what we really want to do is try to cut back on those or cut them out completely. I have a, a you know, a pretty no nonsense policy when it comes to trans fats, just because I find that you can find alternatives for the majority of things that you can swap out that won't have trans fats. Um, so the next thing that we want to talk about is saturated fats. So this one's a bit different. Um, saturated fats are, are harmful to us because they can raise our bad cholesterol, but it's not like trans fats where um, there's no such thing as a good amount at all. Uh, trans fats, it's zero, okay? So even a 2% increase of trans fats in our diets uh, will lead to a 33% increase in heart, heart, death, heart disease related death. Um, whereas saturated fat, it will raise my bad cholesterol, but it can also raise my good cholesterol. So more what we look at for, for paying attention to saturated fats is how much am I consuming? So uh, the biggest sources of our saturated fats in our diet come from animal sources, like our red meats would be high sources of saturated fats. 
our high fat dairy products like our cream and our cheese and our butter. Um, uh, chocolate, uh, unfortunately, chocolate's a really high source of saturated fats. Um, and then of course, anything made with any of that, those ingredients as well. So I just kind of show patients, you know, when we're paying attention to the labels, um, we want to look at the saturated fats, keep, keep an eye on the percentage there. So I can have 100% of my day's intake of saturated fat every day. Um, if something has a lot of saturated fat, it would be 15% or more. Um, if it has very little saturated fat, it would be 5% or less. So just as an example with this butter, um, it's got 27% of my day's intake and get this, the portion size for that is two teaspoons. So if I really wanted to have my butter, maybe I could budget it into my day. Um, but the big thing is, this is why we talk about restricting or, or lowering our intake of, of something like that. Cheese would be the same thing. Doesn't mean I can't have cheese, but maybe I'm gonna cut back on my portions of my cheese. I'm not gonna have it as often. Um, a healthier option to choose when you're looking on snacking on cheese, I would say maybe go get a couple of almonds or cashews or, or pistachios or something like that. That would be a much healthier choice because those are lower in saturated fats. Um, and they also have the good healthy fats. Um, so the unsaturated fats, things like omega-3s that can actually help lower your cholesterol. So keep an eye out, uh, you know, example, I get a lot of people that think, oh, I have the dark chocolate, that's a better idea for me. Um, but I point out right away for them um, that, uh, you know, for, for three squares, it's got 35% uh, of my day's intake of saturated fat. So again, we really need to be uh, mindful of our portions of those things. It doesn't mean I can't ever have them, but I have to be really careful because 35% of my day right there and only three squares of chocolate, that, that adds up pretty quick. So anything that's got 15% or more is a lot. So really, uh, I would say caution and you know try to choose alternatives. 5% or less is a little, that's a, that's a good choice for you to choose. And then lastly, the thing we want to pay attention to is added sugars. So this is a big thing that I'd say has exploded in the past. Hmm, I don't know, 20 years in, in, in our, our diets where there's a lot of foods with added sugars in them. Um, so things like uh, beverages, so sugar, sugar sweetened beverages, um, coffees and teas are included in that one, unfortunately, folks. Um, so it contributes a lot of sugar to our diet. Uh, fruit juices, even when they say 100% fruit juice, it's the processed version of having fruit. So it's taken, you know, if I have orange juice, how many oranges would that be to make a small glass of orange juice? That would be maybe three or four oranges, um, but it's only the sugar from the oranges. We're missing the fiber and all the good stuff that would have um, helped us feel full as well. So um, instead, try to eat the whole fruit instead of having juice. Um, you know, other things like um, vitamin waters and monster drinks and energy drinks, things like that, Gatorade, sports drinks, stuff like that. Those are all high in sugar. So we want to try to avoid those sorts of things um, and instead choose water. Um, so, you know, I really kind of hone in on the sugar sweetened beverages. Other things to kind of pay attention to is your frequency of, of treats and sweets and things like that, that we all know have a lot of sugar in them. So uh, cakes, cookies, candies, you know, stuff like that. Um, treat, keep it to a treat. So what really is a treat frequency? Um, is that every day, five times a day? Maybe not. <laughs> That's not moderation. I would, you know, lean towards more of a, okay, if I want to have a treat a couple nights a week, that's fair. Um, but uh, it shouldn't be that it's the bulk of our everyday intake, right? So we really, really want to try to cut back on that. Um, and what that can do is help lower um, something in our cholesterol called triglycerides, um, uh, which uh, can make our, our, our blood more like thick. Um, so we do want to cut that back. Um, and it also can help lose um, weight gain in the midsection, which also seems to be correlated to or, 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 or causing higher cholesterol as well. So we really want to watch our, our sources of our added sugars. So I hope this helped answer the question today about how to reduce your cholesterol. Um, uh, really, you know, focusing in on those trans and saturated fats. So make sure you check those ingredients for the trans fats. So the partially hydrogenated uh, oils and the shortening. Um, read the, the nutrition facts for the saturated fat. So make sure that we're not having lots of choices that have 15% or more of your day's intake of saturated fat and uh, really be aware of how much sugary drinks there are out there. Um, and then really, you know, it's okay to have our, our treats, but maybe I'm not gonna have it as often as what I was having it before. And those are all really good ways for you to help lower your cholesterol. Thanks.